What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and today it is time for a narrated Wi-Fi battle video. Now if you guys haven't been keeping up with Pokemon news here lately on Pokemon Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, um, just a couple of quick announcements. Number one, make sure you go to GameStop and pick up your serial code to download the Mega Gengar. It's shiny, it's going to have a special move Sludge Wave, definitely worth getting. Also make sure you go and make an account on the Pokemon Trainer Club online. Uh, if you have a Trainer Club account and you opt in for the newsletter before the 20th, then you should get an email with a newsletter in it, and it'll have a demo code for you to download the demo for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So things to keep out an eye for. A lot of new information has come out for the games, which I'm not going to talk about here if you're like me. You're trying to avoid spoilers for the most part. Although, we could debate if it's actually a spoiler or not if it's officially released information, but you may not want to have that information released yet, so, you know, I'm not going to talk about it here. But, if you have enjoyed stuff, good for you, because I've done a pretty good job of avoiding... The things that I'm trying to avoid are designs, so I don't want to see the designs on new like, Mega Pokemon and things like that. But anyways, today's battle. Battle against Trainer Connor. Congratulations to him, he just hit 100 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed to him, please go do so. His link will be in the description. But you see our teams are kind of weird today. Most notable on my team... Is definitely Ivysaur. Eviolite Ivysaur is a force to be reckoned with, even in uh, this weird mixed tier battle that we have going on here. Um, you do see also that I have Rotom, Heat Form, and Dugtrio alongside Noivern and uh, Greninja, which is actually a physical Greninja. I wanted to try out shenanigans with Volt Switch and U Turn, switching back into Dugtrio to trap things. Um, it didn't work out very well in this battle the concept is there just because i think if you had a slow u-turner or a slow volt switcher it'll work a lot better because then dugtrio wouldn't have to take a hit coming in unless you were dodging an electric attack that would work very well anyways though i start off with noivern which is actually a scarf noivern but my opponent doesn't know that i was afraid that he might have a scarf crobat so i wanted to check it out first he just goes straight for brave bird crobat does outspeed noivern typically so it's hard to tell at this point but either way, defensive Rotom does not really care about taking those attacks. Uh, he was going for Taunt there. I was thinking if he were a Lee Crobat, he would have Taunt. So I just went straight for Volt Switch, and that pays off quite nicely right there. I'm able to get off a good amount of damage for a defensive Rotom, and then switch right out. I go into the Greninja to kind of bluff the Scarf, hoping that he will switch. And so I hard switch out back to Rotom. But he actually just roosts, so at least now I know three out of his four moves, and I know that I can't just bluff a Scarf now. But at least I know that, you know, from him revealing the taunt there, that he's not Scarfed or Bandit or anything like that either. Now, he decides to switch out into Pascal. Last time I used Volt Switch, this time I went for Will-O-Wisp. That works out because I'm able to nail the Aromatisse, but it is very common for Aromatisse to carry uh, Aromatherapy. So I'm not going to stay in here with my defensive Rotom to try to do too much damage here. I'm just going to go out into Ceres, the Eviolite Ivysaur, which is a calm nature, and I'll be doing a uh, uh, video on Ivysaur in the future, playing around with some EVs for him. He can take hits really well. Very nice. Uh, I actually put up a substitute here because I didn't think he had too much to hit me with. If he had the Psychic type attack, that would in fact break my substitute. But you can see here Moonblast isn't even enough to break my substitute. And we're going to get some substituting Leech Seed shenanigans going on because Aromatisse has such a nice HP stat. Why pass up that, that sweet, sweet HP? You don't want to pass those hit points up. And I want to get back up to the point where I can bring in Ivysaur and have him take a hit if I need to. Uh, the main downsaur Ivysaur being his lowered base HP over Venusaur. But Venusaur isn't available in lower tiers, so you have to take what you can get. Now this Ivysaur has Sludge Bomb, Sleep Powder, Substitute, and Leech Seed, so it is a little bit walled. Um, Trainer Connor and I found out by something like Bulletproof Chestnut, it can't do anything to it. Because um, Bulletproof blocks the Sludge Bomb, and then the Grass moves don't do anything. So I guess you could sub up and then stare at each other. 
But anyways, though, uh, I tried to put his, um, uh, I tried to put my opponent to sleep there. Excuse me. I kind of got off on a tangent because I expected him to switch. And then I switched out, hoping he'd stay and trying to wake up, which is why I stayed in with Doug Trio. But I end up just doubling back up to Rotom one more time. He surprises me with the last move on his Crobat being Cross Poison. Very good now that that's good coverage for Fairy types before that move was hardly ever used. Um, and I really could have brought in my uh, Bastido down there for the Cross Poison, but I figured I'd come in with Noivern and Outspeed and KO him with a good old Draco Meteor, but I missed. And then I had to take a, Dra a Brave Bird for no reason, but that's that's neither here nor there. It won't end up mattering too much that I missed that. I It is a little bit annoying to play with Crobat because he's so fast. But anyways, though, I decided to go back out into Rotom. Just go straight for Overheat this time instead of dealing with Volts, which I wanted to do a lot of damage to something. And he doesn't really have a lot on his team to take Fire-type attacks besides um, his Sleeping Delphox, which now I'm just going to Volt Switch out to get some a little bit of chip damage here because it is asleep. And he actually leaves it in. I thought for sure he'd switch out, but since he left it in, I get to go out into Doug Trio for a free KO. So yay, my strategy kind of, sort of, worked. I was very surprised he left it in there. Maybe that was just Death Fodder? I'm not really sure. Because uh, he could have very easily double switched out to him, hit him on top. I don't know. I don't know. But either way, I don't really want to stay in on hit him on top now because with the minus one to my attack from Intimidate, I won't be able to do very much damage. So we're going to go back out into Ivy Sword. And yes, I am a calm nature, but poison resists fighting. And hit him on top does not carry coverage moves very often, so I wasn't that afraid of him. Figuring he'd switch out, I decided to go straight for Elite C so I can start getting some HP back. And he does go out into Crobat, which is actually good. I'm not going to bother substituting up against Crobat, and I'm going to play a bit of a dangerous game here, of course, if Crobat has the ability Infiltrator that will hit through a substitute, thereby knocking out my Ivysaur with the Brave Bird. But figuring that he would figure it'd be silly to stay in with Ivysaur, I decided to stay in and go for a Sleep Powder as he roosts up. And so that's great, because now we have a second opportunity to take care of this Crobat. And I, this thing should have been KO'd like five, six turns ago when I went for that Draco Meteor. But I'm going to give Noivern a second chance. We're going to go back on into Noivern. We're going to try the Draco Meteor one more time. I believe this is my Noivern with a, a bit of a weird set. I think it has Draco Meteor, Hurricane, Air S Flamethrower, and U-Turn, I think is what this one has. Uh, I, ha I have like six different Noivern. I think it's so many different useful sets, especially with Boom Burst. But anyways, though, I am able to connect with that Draco Meteor, which is good. Crobat being out of the way makes this battle a lot easier, especially for Ivysaur, even though we still have to deal with Beer Tick here. He surprises me with the play rough. I did not see that coming, especially when he had access to the Ice-type move. Um, Ice and Fairy is a little bit redundant coverage, but that worked out because I was able to switch in um, my... Uh, Rotom, and it didn't do that much because, of course, fire was this fairy. Figuring this is a good opportunity to get my HP back, we decided to go for a rest and get that HP back with sweet dreams and a chesto berry to wake me up as soon as they turn into nightmares. That was close. Now, uh, Hitmontop on top is not very threatening to the remaining members on my team. Between the defen physically defensive Rotom and specially defensive Ivysaur, can't really do much, and I just burned him so that lowers his utility even more. Uh, I, I don't know, Hitmontop would have been a great answer to my Greninja, but I never really got a chance to use him because Hitmontop was hanging around and, and then I would have just been bringing it into priority type attacks. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. We're just going to bring out Noivern once again. I decided to lock myself into Flamethrower uh, after his Sucker Punch just because he might bring back in Beer Tick and I'd rather not be locked in on a minus two or uh, air slash or anything like that, just because number one, those might miss, and number two, I don't want my stats being lowered just yet. Uh, this match is still very much in the balance here, as long as Beer Tick is still hanging around, especially if it has Swiss Swim or something like that. That can very easily plow through my team. So, um, Flamethrower is doing a decent amount of damage. I honestly thought it would do more, but Beer Tick is actually rather bulky. I'm always surprised with how much HP they give him in the trading card game. But that does reflect his stats rather admirably. Now since it is an ice type, I'm able to go out into my physical Greninja here and just go for the rock slide. Yes, I was a little bit risky, I could have just gone for a waterfall. But I really like the idea of using like an earth scroll in Greninja, making that pose. And then rocks falling out. So his last Pokemon is Pikachu, which I was expecting to be 
light ball equipped, but he actually has the focus sash on it, which is really confusing to me. Uh, he does get the static, but it's odd to use focus sash in conjunction with volt tackle because of the recoil damage you will suffer, and it and then it kills itself, and it's not as strong. So I'm I'm going to I think he maybe just had the wrong item on his Pikachu there. That was still a fun match. I didn't get a chance to use Bastido Don, but I got to use. Um, Doug Trio, I think that was the first time I've used it here in 6th gen. And I bred that thing back in 4th gen, I want to say. So it's always good to pull out some old favorites there. I hope you all enjoyed today's battle. And I'm very happy to finally be back on my uploading schedule. Whoop whoop. Uh, what's going on this week? I have a job fair tomorrow. So please send me your spirit bombs and thoughts as I go and just prostrate myself in front of people and say, hire me. I promise I'll be a good employee, and if I am not, well, you won't have to worry about that. I don't know, I, I would never say that to someone trying to hire me, I don't know why I said that. Uh, the point is, is that there are things happening. None of these things will stop and upload on Saturday though, so be sure to come back on Saturday and check out whatever I decide to upload then. In the meantime, have a wonderful week. If you're in the southeast, have a safe week. The weather's still supposed to be crappy today, so you know, handle that. Don't go outside with any umbrellas that have lightning rods on them. Don't do it. Also, don't go outside with an umbrella because you might get blown away. Don't do it. Also, don't go outside wearing a windsuit because you might get blown away. These are all things that I have done at one point in time or the other, and they're all bad ideas. So learn from my mistakes. All right. Bye, guys.